you got here? I got a guy with the longest landing gear legs in the ultralight area, which is where we're at. It is Oshkosh Air Venture. Uh, second day, I think. I'm losing track already. Dan Johnson here speaking to Troy Woodland of Just Aircraft, and this is his new baby, as yet unnamed. Correct. Still don't have a name for it. Yeah. I was calling it the Extreme. That's not the name of it, but it's Extreme in a couple of ways. First of all, look at this gear length and the size of the tires, but there's more we got to look at. But let's focus on the gear at first. You told me some interesting things when I was at the factory, and I got to see an interesting video of this airplane being dropped about four feet, wasn't it? That's correct. And about a four-foot drop, that may not sound like much. This is probably about four feet. Dropping an airplane to the ground uh, and letting it hit on concrete and just letting the, the shock absorb into it is a big accomplishment. Customarily, they're dropped from one or two feet. Four feet is a lot of force. And without a gear link like this and a tire like this, you can't do that. How much does this compress, Troy? It compresses 12 inches, and the spindle is close to 20 inches of wheel travel. You mean from this point right here? That's correct. Up to here? Yeah. It actually moves 20 inches? Almost, yeah. <laughs> That's a lot. So, so, and why would you do that? Just, it started when we did the slatted wing and uh, the angle of attack that it was achieving on landing. Um, we were really slapping it down, and uh, and I knew that if we didn't do something, we might uh, start having problems with the current landing gear. So it was and the slatted wing, by which you mean it could fly so slowly that you were at a high angle of attack when you got to the ground. That's and correct. So you were kind of whacking it like that. That's huh? right. Okay. Well, speaking of that, then let's look at this. As you see, one is open, and one is closed. And normally, when you see well, there are, first of all, there are fixed slots that are just out there and they stay there and the wind always flows through and allows better airflow over the wing. That's fine. Slats, uh, fixed slots on a slow speed aircraft really work very well, but it's always a slow speed aircraft then. It can't do much else than fly very, very slowly. When they move, they're called slats and sometimes they're moving, they're moved by uh, electric motors or things like that. Uh, this one is what you call automatic. That's correct. And why is that, Troy? Why do you call them automatic? Well, they just, you know, they just do their own thing. Uh, um, they hinge the out end. sideways, as you see. And, uh, you know, it's angle of attack and airspeed. And uh, basically what we're seeing is about 40 mile an hour. They deploy automatically. And, uh, and do, both, do both sections come out at 40 miles an it, hour? It, it does if the pressure is right on both, both even on both, uh, both wings, you know, they'll come out. You know, if it's not, then one may come out on the other wing first and, or whatever turbulent air, you know, the pressure and the angle of attack, you know, maybe one wing's lower or whatever. And so these are kind of uh, smart slats. Yeah, that's what they just do their own <laughs> they thing. They know what to do at the right time and they just do it. What I found interesting is that since these two move separately on takeoff, once you get up to a certain speed, this one will come back in first, is that correct? Um, when, on takeoff, the prop wash will blow this one in and then as soon as you rotate, and that oh, angle okay. attack, it'll, so it'll come, come back out, out. And you can climb out with, with them both in. And then as you push the nose over and exceed 4D5, then they'll come in and then you just climb out. Do both of them come in at that speed? That, that's correct. Okay. Yeah. So at takeoff, when the prop blast is closing this one, and this one stays out because it's outside that's of that, correct. you're getting a lot of airflow, which goes right over the aileron then. It gives you roll control at ridiculously slow speeds, I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Like how slow? Well, I, I, <laughs> you just gotten this airplane going, yeah, I know. So it, give us what you know now. We're, I'm seeing, uh, you know, down here, not at gross, you know, at uh, it, it, close to sea level and kind of cool days. I'm, I'm in, I'm in the twenties. Um, <laughs> I'm going to get home, play with some vortex generators, and before I establish, you know, any numbers and. Um, maybe in the next couple of weeks we'll have some stuff on the website, but right now I'm kind of. I don't want to throw too many numbers out there. Well, that's wise. I think you do that well. But So you're going to add vortex generators to this as well. That's great. I mean, that's like every slow speed flying trick in the books. You're kind of pulling out all the stops here on it. So, and, and, and what's your purpose with making an airplane with this capability? What are you trying to achieve? Uh, it's just the type of flying that we like to do. And, uh, <laughs> um, you know, you can't fly too slow. Can't fly too slow, which means you can land in really, really small areas. I went and visited the factory here and got to see a runway I had heard about for a long time, which is a 400-foot strip. Is that correct? That's correct. And it's steep enough that I could 
at least in my younger days, launch a hang glider off that. It's that steep. And these fellows in Troy routinely take off and land there. You land downhill, you uh, you take off downhill, you land uphill, always. Yeah. You, you got another little obstacle at the end of that runway, though. Yes, right. <laughs> so I've got to tell you just how droll he was when he answered this question. I went, well, I see it work. They had a young fellow out there, newly, not newly licensed, but a young pilot. And he did it just like it was nothing at all. But this is a really, 400 feet is not very long. This runway here is probably 1,400 feet or something. And uh, they take off and they go away and it came back in, no problem. But right at the bottom of that, there are trees and there's water. And I said, well, what happens if you lose the engine on takeoff? He just quietly says, well, you're going to get wet. <laughs> yeah. But I don't think you've ever gotten wet, have you? Oh, I haven't yet. Good engine maintenance, I guess. Yeah, huh? yeah we don't have a lot of places to go, but water might not be that bad. <laughs> Well, not if you could fly so slowly, yeah. anyway. One uh, of the so things they do with these big tires, though, Dan, is they actually come in on the water, just right off the top of the water, water spraying off it, and they can actually drive it right up on shore from the water. I think you've got a picture on your website about that kind of... There's, there's, I'm sure there's, there's photos out there. <laughs> I'm sure that. there are. <laughs> now, uh, Troy, uh, you ran a business, another business that we knew, um, uh, making a, a similar airplane, but you were out west then, and now you're in North Carolina. Uh, right on the South Carolina. South right Carolina. On the, right on the border of North Carolina. Yeah, almost in Georgia. They're all right, kind of right correct. there. Pretty country too. It is. And uh, when you moved back there, is when Just Aircraft began. Well, Just Aircraft started actually about '01 in uh, Caldwell, Idaho. Okay, out west still. Yeah, okay. out west. And uh, a couple years later, uh, we moved to uh, South Carolina. Now you can tell a little bit of familiarity with this in an airplane that most people know as a Kit Fox, but really is the Avid Flyer. That's correct. It's of course sort of where everything was born, a Dean Wilson design, and that got the Kit Fox and several other designs, including some from Europe as well, use a similar construction. Over the years you've changed that quite a bit now. I don't think it's fair to call this that anymore. Yeah, but you know, we got to give a lot of credit to Dean. Um, Dean. Uh, he, uh, you see a lot of a lot of his design implemented in this airplane, and uh, and um, I'm proud of it. So. Well, I see we just had your partner walk up here too, Gary Schmidt, who is uh, uh, Troy's partner in Just Aircraft. Hey. Glad to have you join us. And uh, I went and visited the factory as I mentioned, and it's a really interesting place where there's a lot of cool things kind of going on there, including a neat little Part 103 trike ultralight with retractable gear and retractable engines. Just a private project, but it's it's the kind of people that you have working for you that say, why don't we try this? Or why don't we do something different in Just Aircraft? They sound like kind of an ordinary name, it's Just Aircraft. Well, I don't think that's actually too accurate for you fellas, because you do some pretty unusual stuff. Have you been flying here at the show, Troy? Yes, sir. And uh, how are people reacting to the way the airplane flies? I, I think all in all, it's been going really, really well. Excellent. Uh, yesterday was probably the best Monday we've had in years. Is that right? Yeah. Wonderful. Well, behind you, as I look at you here, I see these enormous flaps. They look like elephant ear flaps to me. But you, when you when I talked to you, you said you also had to make some changes to the tail because of just all what you've done here. Tell me about what you had to do to the tail and why. Well, with the slats, you know, you, you can achieve a, uh, uh, you know, up to a 25 degree angle of attack. and. We could do that with power, but on a, in a power out situation, we uh, it was quite obvious that we needed a little more tail um, in order to achieve that. You know, I was looking for that 21, 22 degrees. I mean, when you're well throttled back, on yeah, a well throttled approach back or something, and, okay. and stick all the way back. Um, I wanted to be able to achieve that angle of attack, uh, you know, without the prop blast. And it did. It, it made us. So what you made the uh, the uh, uh, elevator larger, the whole tailplane larger. The elevator and horizontal, all of it's a little bit bigger. We're going to take and uh, make kind of a flying tail on it in the future. Um, oh, are you? Okay. Yeah, see, see if we can't get it's a company more. in motion, but uh, always doing different things. By that I mean. But you also have been enjoying some pretty good success in the business. I think you told me you've been doing uh, three airplanes a month for a couple, three years or more. That's correct. We've been trying to do, you know. Either three, three to four a month is what we what we try to do. And that's a number, by the way, if that doesn't sound familiar to viewers, that's a real good number for an airplane company, and especially in the last three or four years when 
business hasn't been so hot in aviation or for that matter many other industries. So excellent job, fellas. Most of those or all of those are kits, I believe. Or yeah. Not all of them. Yeah. Because you do SLSA as well. Well, we'll we'll be finished with the SLSA probably the first of next year. Okay. So. Uh, so, so some real good work. We teased everybody, I hope, a little bit with some of what we see here, and you got to see this thing fly to really appreciate it. But uh, where do we go on your website, or what's your website address so that we can get more information for those that would like to investigate further? The uh, website's justaircraft.com, and uh, on the site, I mean, there's lots of pictures and videos and stuff like that. And hopefully in the next couple of weeks, we'll have some really good videos of this and have some data and spec sheets and stuff on it. So. Excellent. Over the years, I've gotten to fly a couple of their airplanes. They have called the Escapade, and you have the uh, the airplane that we know as this airplane before all these different features were added to it is the Highlander. Both of those uh, pilot reports on those, other videos with uh, Just Aircraft people, you can find on bydanjohnson.com or bydanjohnson.com. Thanks for watching here at AirVenture Oshkosh.